Hey dudes, dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig in Depth, we're going to be talking about enums and unions, okay? Uh, so let's start out with enums. Here we have an example uh, of an enum called color, and uh, you list out the fields of the enum, uh, separated by commas. And here's an example uh, demonstrating that enums can have uh, methods or namespace functions, as they're called in Zig. Um, we haven't touched uh, in detail about functions yet in the course, but we'll be seeing that in future videos. Uh, but I just wanted to show an example that you can have methods in uh, an enum definition. Um, enums basically uh, are assigned automatically an integer type, which is which will be of the smallest possible unsigned integer type to cover the different fields. So in this case, we only have three fields. So it's basically like if we were specifying explicitly here that we wanted to use a U2. And, and you can specify this explicitly like this if you wanted to specify, uh, use a, a specific type for your enum. Okay? And um, the, the different fields get assigned automatically. This would be the equivalent of doing this. Automatically auto incrementing uh, integer values starting at zero. Okay, but you can specify whatever value you want. Okay, so I can set this here to nine and uh, this to six like this. If I didn't specify here for blue, then it would get the next one after nine, so it would be ten. Okay, so you can change the ordering to in, in that case. For example, if I specify here one, well that means that I would be starting from one. And this will be two and this one will be three okay uh, so you have that option too there's also uh, what's called a non-exhaustive enum and you can specify that with the underscore like this and that basically uh, is telling zig that uh, this enum um, is not covering all the possibilities and, and later on when we see the switch on uh, using an enum you can also have a prong that uses the underscore that basically uh, it's, it's, it's telling that uh, the switch uh, that it, 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 it we're dealing with a non-exhaustive enum okay um, if you have an enum for example that that's that's representing numbers uh, that would be the case because you couldn't possibly list out all the numbers in that enum so that would be a, a good example of a non-exhaustive enum case okay uh, next up well, let's look at the union uh, union is basically uh, a data type that lets us, lets us uh, use memory uh, quite efficiently when we know that a variable can only be of one specific type in, in a set of types. Uh, the union, what it does is um, it'll separate in memory the space required for the biggest one of those fields. And then uh, it's like if each of the fields uh, we're, we're using that same memory in an overlapping fashion, but only one of the fields can be active at a time. Okay, so in this this uh, union called number, we have only two fields: uh, int of type u8 and float of type f64. And in this case, uh, the biggest one is the f64, which uses eight bytes. So this union would be eight bytes. Uh, that's the, that would be the size. Okay, um, if the int uh, field is the one that's active, then it would be just using uh, eight bytes, uh, 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 just one byte, excuse me, uh, from that uh, area of eight bytes in memory. If we're using uh, the float field as the active field, then the full eight bytes would be in use, okay? So uh, the memory, that same block of memory would be interpreted differently depending on the active field, okay? And only one of the active fields uh, can be active at a time. Um, and uh, as in the case of uh, enums, uh, unions can, can also have methods. Um, I didn't put a, an example here, but they, they, they can. Here now we have an example of what's called a tag union. It's, it's basically when you, when you have uh, both of these types uh, together. As you can see here, we're specifying that we are uh, using a union with an enum tag type and um, we basically here uh, have the fields here's an example of a field that has type void 
um, this is exactly the same as this one okay when the type is void you can omit the type so uh, this would be the idiomatic way of, of writing it out but you can specify the type like this void um, this field has type u size um, okay and uh, as with enums and, and bare unions we can also have methods here we're defining a method to determine if uh, a specific field is of a, t uh, of a particular tag type uh, we can get the enum tag type with this uh, special function in stud uh, meta it's called tag you give it the, the tag union type and uh, it'll give you the type of the enum part of the tag union okay um, let's go down here to the main function to see some examples of usage here we have a variable fave color it is of type color and we're seeing here an example where you don't uh, when, when you when you're writing out the literal for an enum and also applies to uh, tag unions uh, you don't have to uh, write out the name of, of the type here you could but the idiomatic way is to just start with the dot and uh, the name of the field because uh, the type of the union or enum it can be determined here uh, it can be inferred okay because you have the type over here so you don't have to be redundant in that case okay and here we are assigning another value as you can see first it was red then it was blue uh, here we have an example if you ever have the need to obtain that uh, integer value from the enum you have this built-in int from enum okay and the other way around you can obtain the uh, enum field from an integer with enum from int okay as we're doing here and here now we can see uh, as I said before the real power of switch uh, when you're dealing with enums and, and tag unions as we're gonna see here it's it's just a, a fave color is a type of just an enum and we are uh, indeed switching on the different uh, enum fields if uh, we didn't cover all of the uh, options we would then need the else prong it would be mandatory but in this case since we are covering all of the fields all of the possibilities we don't need the else prong um, here we are uh, we ha have an example of the union the bear union this is basically the literal uh, that you can use uh, to specify that we want the int field in this case with value 13 and uh, when you want to change the active field here we're uh, reassigning the whole uh, union uh, with a, with another literal here specifying the active field as float in the case of uh, tag unions it's pretty much the same we're defining here a variable token of type token which was our tag union that we defined uh, previously here the literal can be this simple uh, just a field name because uh, in this case the type of this field it's void so uh, we don't have to uh, go all out like this here because there is no uh, value to be assigned in this case so we can just uh, specify it like this and uh, when we switch on a tag union we uh, have these uh, fields that were void but when we have a field that does have uh, a type that can uh, receive a value we have the added benefit of being able to capture like in this case right here okay um, here we're reassigning uh, another uh, f uh, active uh, field for that tag union this in this case the digit and here we are switching once again okay and finally what we have here is an example where we can compare uh, an instance of a tag union to just a tag okay uh, and once we assert that indeed this is uh, an instance of that active field uh, we can access it like this directly using the dot okay and compare it to the type uh, of that field so uh, let's take a look if we uh, have the output yes there you go that uh, the output from the different uh, debug prints okay 
So uh, basically, that's what I wanted to cover uh, in terms of enums, unions, and tag unions. They are really powerful and versatile tool in, in the Zig uh, tool chest. And uh, when you look at a lot of Zig code and, and, and in the standard library source code, you're going to see them used extensively. Okay. So uh, here did the builder. I'll see you in the next one.